Good day. Another day, another beautiful day. And day two on 25 days of Thanksgiving. And um, glad to have you with us. We're, we're talking about being thankful uh, for these days leading up into Thanksgiving. I'm just hoping that somehow, I don't know how this will pan out, that it, it helps each of us to find um, some place in our day to focus on God and to, to focus on His goodness towards us and to have a, a heart of gratitude and thanks. And uh, the Bible even speaks of, of coming to His house with thanksgiving. And we're going to get into that as well over the days. I would like to keep these brief. I know yesterday was, was a little long. Um, today I've got, very simply, one verse for you. And then I'm going to read the first Thanksgiving proclamation. And uh, so just, just lay, laying a, found, a foundation over time of, uh, of Thanksgiving, uh, of our history. But uh, I just hope that it will be an encouragement to each of you. If you're traveling, if you're working, you don't need to watch the video. You can just uh, listen. That would be fine. And, uh, and then let's just see where this goes. All right. Amen. So let's go ahead and pull this uh, graphic off. And, and the verse for today is very simply Psalms 116, uh, 116 and verse 12. I'll read it in its context beginning in verse 9. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I believe, therefore, have I spoken. I have, I was greatly afflicted. I said in my haste, all men are liars. Verse 12, what shall I render unto the Lord for all his benefits towards me? I will take the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows unto the Lord now in the presence of all his people, precious in the sight of the Lord, is the death of his saints. But specifically there on verse 12, and that, that was the reason why I pulled this, what shall I render unto the Lord for all his benefits towards me? God is so good. There's no way we could pay him back. We know that. But at the same time, we're not meant to sit on our laurels and do nothing. We should be busy doing something, serving God, and showing gratitude as we do it. God has been so good to every one of us. Our families, our children, our moms and dads, our siblings, our church family, our jobs. I know yesterday uh, in the survey, uh, some were thankful for their jobs. Everybody was thankful for their family. And uh, some were thankful for retirement. We have so much to be thankful for. What shall I render unto the Lord for all his benefit towards me? It seems like it's just impossible that we could ever render anything that would equate to or balance the great gifts that he gives to us every day. So again, I just want to encourage everyone to think about the great benefits and blessings that God puts in our lives every day and begin getting our hearts in tune uh, with that. And we're going to be going somewhere with it here in just a moment. I do have a challenge at the end. So if you're able to listen through, that would be great. What I'm going to share with you now is the first uh, Thanksgiving proclamation that we can find here in the United States, actually before it was the United States. It would surprise you of when it was. <clears throat> and, um, well, with everything being taken out of, with, with everything related to God being taken out of society and schools, it's nice to step back and see that we had a we have a godly heritage and we had a godly foundation, and so uh, I think this is a, a just a, a pertinent time to review some of this. All right, so we're going to go and uh, and review it. 1676, June 20th, and again, you don't need to watch the video; you can just uh, listen. Um, so, as an introduction, on June 20th, 1676, the Governing Council of Charlestown, Massachusetts, held a meeting to determine how best to express thanks for the good fortune that had seen their community, uh, community securely established. By unanimous vote, they instructed Edward Rawson, the clerk, to proclaim June 29th as a day of thanksgiving, our very first one. 
That proclamation is reproduced here in the same language and spelling as the original, and I'm going to read through that. But think about this for a second. Uh, what would it be like in Rockwall, Texas, or in any town for that matter, if the town council gathered together to have a meeting to make one determination? How best to express thanks for the good fortune that God has bestowed upon this community. That's big. That's what happened. So putting it into that context, I'm going to read through it. It literally begins, The Holy God. Having by a long and continual series of His afflictive dispensations in and by the present war with the, heaven, uh, the heathen natives of this land, written and brought to pass bitter things against his own covenant people in this wilderness. Yet so, that we evidently discern that in the midst of his judgments, he hath remembered mercy, having remembered his footstool in the day of his sore displeasure against us for our sins, with many singular intim uh, intimations of his fatherly compassion and regard, reserving many of our towns from desolation, threatened and attempted by the enemy and giving us especially of late with uh, many of our confederates, many signal advantages against them. I just lost my place there. There we go. Without such disadvantage to ourselves as formerly we have been sensible of. If it be the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed, it certainly bespeaks our positive thankfulness when our enemies are in any measure disappointed or destroyed, and feeling the Lord should take notice under so many limit, uh, imitations, intimations of his returning mercy. We should be found an insensible people as not standing before him with thanksgiving as well as lading him with our complaints in the time of pressing afflictions. I'd pause there and it's not right, they're saying, for us to stand before God giving thanksgiving but also complaining about the afflictions that he gives us. No, that's not what they wanted to do. I'll continue. The council has thought me to appoint and set apart the 29th day of this instant June as a day of solemn thanksgiving and praise to God for such his goodness and favor, many particulars of which mercy might be instanced. But we doubt not those who are sensible of God's afflictions have been as diligent to espy him returning to us. And that the Lord may behold us as a people offering praise and thereby glorifying him, the council doth commend it to the respective ministers, elders, and people of this jurisdiction solemnly and seriously to keep the same, beseeching that being persuaded by the mercies of God, we may all, even with whole people, offer up our bodies and souls as a living and acceptable sacrifice unto God by Jesus Christ. That is a reading of the first Thanksgiving proclamation, 1676. The Governing Council of Charlestown, Massachusetts, holding a meeting to determine how to express their thanks for the great fortune, really, of their substance, of their continuing in the wake of, of attacks and and I know it, it mentioned in here uh, heathen nations, and some would, would argue that to be uh, the, the Native Americans. Uh, if you go back and study history, it was, it was not that at all, okay? It was uh, they were establishing a community, and they had nations, uh, whether it was indigenous or whether it was other nations. There were other nations that were uh, attempting to establish communities throughout the early United States during its founding and the wars that were going on between them, the, uh, the desperation in trying to survive in a new land, a new wilderness. And there were 
uh, uh, friendships that were made with, in many instances with the Native Americans, and, I, and I'll share that with you on another day. And uh, there were wars, there were, but uh, there was also some, some kinship that developed regarding the natives. But there was also the other countries that were warring against them and seeking to sabotage and undermine. There was just, a, there was a lot going on. Well, let's go back. Because even in this, it said, basically, that if, how can we come before God in thanksgiving and also complain of our afflictions? It's not about our afflictions. It's about God's goodness upon us. And they took, the town took it upon themselves to, uh, to call together a governing council and, and say, what can we do to express the good fortune? Can you imagine the great feeling of, of blessing that was on a community and, and knowing that that blessing was from God, that great feeling was so immense that they would call a town council to determine how to express thanksgiving for that good fortune. And all of it was expressed to God, the holy God, and, uh, and rightfully so. I would encourage you that, uh, that we, we did begin with a good foundation. There was lots of challenges with the early settlers, and, and there were lots of people hurt through the years. But this nation was founded on Christian principles. It was founded on God in more ways than you can ever imagine. Don't ever let the news or uh, things being taken out of the schools, don't ever let that get, get, get you down, get, get you discouraged. Know that we were founded on God. But more than that, even if the nation weren't, and although we're going to be hitting some of that over the coming days, you were created by God. You were founded on God. If you're saved, you were founded on Christ as well. So I would encourage you to, to see God's great mercies and blessings in your life. Now, your challenge for today. Now, I know yesterday the survey was a little difficult for some people to fill out. It was, it was difficult to find that answer spot. So I'm just going to ask you to use the uh, chat the chat area below or the response area below <clears throat> this post. I'm going to ask you to do this. One of the things that we noticed yesterday with the Feast of the Tabernacles is that it was about community. It was about gathering together. It was about spending time with one another, but also giving honor to God. So I'm going to ask you to, this early in the dialogue, to do something. I'm going to ask you to go out of your way this week. Two. Your goal is two. Two individuals or two families. One, somebody you know in the church. Somebody you see regularly at the church when you're there. Think of any face might come to, come to mind. Anybody that, that you would see regularly when you go to church. Don't call them. I'm going to ask you to do this this week. Take time, and I know everybody's busy. Some are actually pa uh, packaging things and maybe even preparing to move in the future. Or just lots of things are going on. I'm going to ask you, think of someone in the church that you would see when you come. Drive to them this week. Knock on their door. Bring a little fine old lily. Doesn't matter. Some fruit. Just sit and talk with them. Fellowship with them. Build that relationship that Rockwall Baptist, Bethel Baptist used to have. Build that relationship. So number one is someone that you would see at church if, if and when you come. Go to them. Number two, a second person that I'm going to ask you to go see. Someone that you have not seen and you would not see if you came. Now that could fall into two camps. That could be um, a senior saint that's physically not able to come. I think of Sister Sue. Sister Julia, Sister Robbie, okay? Could also be some people that have become uh, disenfranchised over time. I think of the, the Hawkins, wonderful couple, wonderful couple. 
you can think of, of some that uh, have been disenfranchised that maybe they're, they're, they're attending another church now and that's okay. I think of Sister Linda, okay? Um, Ted and Patsy Mitchell, okay? Um, so, so I'm going to ask you to do two things. I'm going to ask you to commit to seeing two people this week. People slash families, okay? And take something with you. It could be, like I said, a five dollar lily. It could be some fruit or anything. And sit and spend 30 minutes with them. Okay? You will leave there being blessed beyond measure. Uh, someone that you would see it, when you come to church that you would see there every time. And someone who you have not seen at church in a very long time. And that could be a senior saint. It could be somebody that's been disenfranchised. Do it. That's what I'm going to ask you to commit to doing. And in it, you will be blessed. You'll be blessed of God. And I think you'll find yourself with a lot to be thankful for. Amen. Y'all have a great day. God bless you.